Hey guys, it's MC Fixit here. We got this uh, beautiful Firebird uh, from a Cap City tournament from last year for Columbus. Uh, and my buddy wants me to put a uh, sweet little logo on it. And I have a little surprise in here as well. Uh, I'm gonna try something I've never done before. Hopefully it turns out well. Uh, so you'll have to stick around to see what that is. Uh, you will see me maybe weed it out. This is kind of a clear vinyl. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this hotbed dye. Um, I might add color to it as well. I don't know how color is gonna turn out on this. So I'm a little nervous to do color because uh, this is not white. And I'm kind of afraid if you put red and yellow, it's gonna make brown uh, because it's got green and uh, that just sounds like a terrible disc dye. So uh, I'm gonna text my buddy once we have the original uh, color black on there and see what he wants me to do. And we may have an experiment with different colors on it, but uh, that's kind of up to him. So let's go ahead and jump on in. And so you're gonna want a disc. You get to choose whatever disc, uh, white or lighter color work the best for hotbeds. You get your stencil, you go ahead and cut your stencil out on a Cricut, this is an Oracle 651 clear vinyl. And then you'll want transfer paper. This comes in a big long roll in this little box here. And uh, I just put a line down and a line down. In fact, I might actually make myself a new one because this one is pretty much at its end. So I'll probably do that in this video because it's just not sticking very well anymore. I use Dawn dish soap and water to clean it up. You can also go to a sink. Uh, there's the transfer paper. Acetone is really helpful. Uh, then we're gonna be using I Dye Poly Black. Um, I went ahead and already threw it in my pot over here, um, but you take half of one of these in a mason jar. I'm getting off the doing another disc dye. So literally all I did is fill it up with water, half of a packet of the I Dye Poly Black, and then I just tossed it in there. So. We use a little butane torch. This thing works really well to uh, get all of the air bubbles out of things. I also use a heat gun to get air bubbles out of the vinyl. We're gonna use an electric burner today so we don't have to be inside. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's right over here. Doesn't take much, pretty inexpensive through Amazon. Scraper tool, weeding tool, Sharpie, and a cut tool uh, just to make sure we got everything we need. I do use scissors when I'm cutting the packet, uh, then I also use a ruler from time to time. Uh, then you may have seen this over here. This is a 3D print job I did. This just helps me get nice and lined up, totally optional, but I kind of like it and it's helpful. So let's go ahead and jump in to getting the stencil um, prepped. And so we need to weed this stencil and part of weeding that is kind of the difficult part, especially on this, it is a clear vinyl. Clear vinyl means uh, you're not gonna be able to see it because it's got white underneath the clear. And so I'm gonna do my best to just probably speed this up. Uh, but you're pulling off everything you want to be black. Let me say that again, everything you want to be black, you're gonna go ahead and pull up. Uh, then you'll probably see what I have decided to do and try out on this disc. So let's go ahead and do it. I'll probably fast forward this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on because we're starting to get kind of close to where we need that. And I've gone ahead and weeded all of this. I like where it's at on the weeding. Um, if there's anything you do mess up, you do have the option of going ahead and kind of pulling a little bit more of it, but I think that looks good. I am gonna make a new transfer paper. It's a pretty easy task. Just go ahead, get it pretty much lined up the same size as the previous. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut straight down on this. I've probably used that transfer paper 10 or 12 times now. So it is kind of at its end, which is fine with me. And then I just fold it in half, try to get it nice and straight. Good fold, and then another fold. And that kind of gives you the idea on where to go ahead and put your line. And I just put it all the way to the end. 
And then here as well. Same thing on this side. And then I go try to find kind of a clear disc or at least a white disc. Um, I do have a clear one on me. And so you just start kind of lining it up to what looks to be completely center on there. All that looks good right there. And then I just put it and draw a circle around it just like so. I do save the back of one of the Oracle 51, or sorry, of the Oracle 5160s that is uh, white because it is hard to tell with this transfer paper. So one side's white, the other side's white. I just like this. It just makes it easy. I know exactly what I'm doing and you can just see where it's at. So we're gonna go ahead and put this down and go ahead and start to line this bad boy up. I'm gonna scoot some stuff out of my way. The other thing sometimes I do is I will actually put, I'll kind of find what half is. This should be about an eight inch by eight inch. Perfect it is. So I'll put a little mark at each one of those just to kind of help line me up a little bit more. This is optional, but everything you can do to help yourself get lined up, I truly do believe helps. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the actual vinyl that will be coming up as well. So go ahead and take it. And uh, then it is off center, I know, for the camera just a little bit, but uh, that's for me to be able to be better lined up. So I like that right there. No, I don't. That was terrible. So I'm gonna have to uh, align better when I get to the disc. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to trust that because uh, I did not get that on there very good. I'm gonna have to look at the actual stencil a little bit. So that was not a good attempt. I totally butchered that, but that's okay. That does happen sometimes. So we're just gonna go ahead and peel this off. Oh, careful not to rip any part of your vinyl. Just go slow, making sure all of it comes up. The wheel is having some issues right there. There we go. So we'll go ahead and get our disc and get it centered up right on there like that. But first thing we have to do, and I can't believe I forgot, we have to erase the stamp. So go ahead and grab paper towel, acetone. Acetone is corrosive and it is not good to get on your skin. So I highly encourage some gloves. And uh, one thing about the Anova disc, uh, normally the stamps come off really, really clean. They've been doing this for a while, so they know how to make stamps that don't really stay on there. I don't know if that's their intention, but uh, they definitely come off quite easily. One little spray just to clean the disc, just like so. Scoot all that crap over. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Actually, if I look at an angle, I don't like how I need to spend a few more seconds on it. I was trying to rush it. Sorry. Because if you look at some different angles, you may see some different parts of that original stamp. And I do want to make sure that actually does come off really well. I mean, it still looks good, especially from the angle I had, 
but uh, it's just a reminder to always look at some different angles. And this is a glow one, which is kind of cool. Um, not all of the uh, Firebirds are glow, but this one is. I have the exact same disc. It's a little different stamp. So you'll probably see me do mine sometime relatively soon. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. So that's part of the reason I've not done anything. So that's on there nice and good. So now we're just going to spend a whole lot of time working out all of the air bubbles and so you are going to want to spend probably a good solid 10 maybe 15 minutes really working on all this uh, sometimes you can get them out by hand sometimes you do need a scraper tool you do want to make sure uh, that the most important is the ones next to the edge um, if they're in the center here like I'm not near as worried about it as something that is sitting up next to the edge of the disc. You can also put a little bit of heat on it. And what I mean by heat is like a heat gun or a hair dryer. I would highly encourage not anything much stronger than that. And if you do a heat gun, make sure it's only on the first setting. You do not want to ruin it by putting too much heat. Heat also does help remove some of the air bubbles, but this is a pretty complex design. And so you really want to make sure you got it good. So put it on number one with your heat. We'll probably do that at least two more, at least one more time. I always do it about twice. And again, it's the edges is what matters the most that you get all those little air bubbles out or else it will just go right up and through underneath. So I'm gonna work on the outside first, then I'm gonna come back into the actual design a bit more in a second here. Uh, then you're going to want to work your design every place that has a potential air bubble make sure you are going over it Heat it up again. Thank you. 
So just keep at it. This may take 10 or 15 minutes. You just want to make sure as many of those air bubbles are out as possible. It's just going to give you the best effect. Okay, I think that looks good. We'll go ahead and grab this and I am going to put a little bit of butane on it just to make sure we and make sure all of the potential air bubbles are popped. It does work really well popping air bubbles. And then we're going to go ahead and set it down in nice and gently. We're just going to do it from one angle to the other. Uh, then just go ahead and let this thing sit for 10 minutes. So that's been almost 10 minutes. We're about a minute away, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull it just because I am. So we're going to go ahead and let that thing drain a little bit. And then we will grab a single paper towel and just go ahead and wipe it off. And so I'm probably not gonna peel it yet. I'm gonna go ahead and write the, the guys whose disc this is and uh, see if he wants any color on it or if he kind of likes where it's at right now. So, uh, so I was told to go ahead and give it some color. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna end up using uh, sun yellow and uh, fire red to be able to do this. And so we'll keep some of it white like the mouth and uh, like the eyes and stuff and the windows. But we're gonna go ahead and pull some of the parts we're gonna go ahead and make red, which is gonna be pretty much the body of the car. I have a feeling this one's gonna look really sweet by the time we get done with it. I mean, it's not gonna be as clear of colors as if it was a, uh, as if it was, sorry, I'm trying to think of the word, as if it was a white disc. But it still should look pretty cool. And I might have to make more of this red. It's hard to tell how much is in these little bottles until you just kind of start going with it. So all these are about a three to four ounce bottle. Put some Pro Chem and Dye in it. Um, it's about a quarter of a teaspoon. I have other videos on my channel where you can see exactly how I do that. It's a pretty simple thing and then I just kind of move it around. You don't have to be super careful on this one. Uh, for the sole fact you uh, aren't having any other colors next to it. When we do the yellow I'm going to have to be much much more specific on where I'm putting the yellow down. This bottle is almost out but we're going to try to finish this design here. And my next disc die, I'll have to add some more. So I think that looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and cap that back up. And uh, this may seem weird, but take that same butane torch we used a minute ago and just go ahead and hit it. And I'm probably gonna let this thing sit on there for about an hour to two hours. Uh, the sun has just gone down. It would have been perfect if the sun was up, um, but it's not right now, so that's fine but uh, the sun does help make these things come more alive and it makes them get done quicker.
I'm just kind of moving some of that dye around because it was a little bit light in a few places. Okay, just go ahead and let that thing sit for a good solid hour or maybe two hours, depending if it was, like I said, hot outside, I'd put this out in the sun, but it's not really hot right now, so I'm not going to. So this thing has gone ahead and sat for just over one hour in my garage. It's pretty warm in here, so we're gonna kinda see. Oh yeah, I think that turned out well. Turned out a little better than I think. I thought it was going to actually. Was not certain about uh, the color on this. It is kind of pink, so I might go ahead and put it back down and on for a little longer actually that's a little pinker than what I'd want it to be. We'll go ahead and mix that up well. And then we will go ahead, oh, and uh, we'll probably end up putting more on. Okay, let's go ahead and do a second coat. And with this second coat, you do just want to make sure you do the same thing as the first one. Just make sure you have enough on there. The goal is to make this not pink. So I like that right there. We're gonna go ahead and let that thing sit after we do a little butane torch to it. Just to help get out any of the air bubbles. And there we go. We're gonna let that sit for one more hour. So that's been another hour. So that's a total of two hours this has sat. And so we'll get a couple more paper towels and we'll just jump right on in and get this thing wiped and cleaned. I'm hoping it looks much brighter red. And it still looks pretty pink. I was really hoping that would make it darker and it really hasn't very much. So that might be all that we will be able to get. I do think it looks a little darker, just not as much as I was kind of hoping it would be. But I guess there probably is a good chance that it won't get any darker than that. But uh, at least it does look really solid. Um, the next thing we are going to do is go ahead and peel off where we're gonna have it yellow. So I gotta find my pick. There it is. So we're gonna have this yellow. So before I actually put the yellow on, I changed part of what I'm doing. Because this is gonna be so close to so, other, so many other things, I'm actually going to use, this is just some leftover uh, vinyl I have. And so I just wanna make sure I am kinda saving every place that was red. So I'm just gonna make some cuts on here and pull this vinyl off and put it down. Oh, actually, sorry, this was white vinyl. I said it wrong, it's not clear, but that's okay. Oh, and I totally forgot about this thing over here. We are going to need to get this guy to
So now that's ready. Sorry, that took a wee bit longer than I thought. The goal was just to get and cover this whole thing up. So when we put this yellow down, it will really take and look really sweet. And then we also have this part right here. Same thing as before, we're gonna go ahead and use the butane and just kind of heat that up. And that should be good. Let, let that sit thing, for, let it sit for at least one hour, maybe two hours. Uh, I probably am gonna let this do two hours just because it is yellow on green. And uh, just hopefully then it does pick it all up and it looks really great. So uh, it started raining outside, so I had to go grab this disc really quick and uh, go ahead and wipe off that yellow area. And I do think that looks like it worked. Fantastic. I was not certain what kind of coloration we would get because of this disc. And uh, go ahead and wipe it off a little bit. Get that nice and good so we don't get it anywhere else on the disc. And then we're just gonna spend some intentional time peeling up the rest of it. And this thing has sat because of having to work and stuff for a while. And so it may uh, really be stuck on there. So you may have to spend some quality time getting underneath it. And I've heated it up a couple of different times. So getting it off might be a bit more of a challenge. So I'll probably speed that up. Man, I think that turned out really, really sweet. You got the halo effect, you've got the different coloration. Um, you could add more color if you wanted. I could have made the wheels gray or whatever and the blinkers uh, orange, but uh, I like how that looks. It's a little more simple, but uh, that thing is gonna be an awesome thrower and a pretty sweet addition to my buddy Joel's bag. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please put those in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a great day.